This video continues with the identification of this unknown pinned carabid past the level of tribe all the way down to the level of species. Okay, so now we have a new set of characters. This is our first time coming to a key again. Um, and we see that this key, there's a lot again of things just to kind of rule out up front. Okay, head each side uh, in front of the eye, there's a little prominent angulate projection. Okay, let's go here and we can kind of zoom in really closely and see that here's the eye, here's the antenna. Hmm, so I would not call this an angulate projection by any means, but we do see there is a little curve here. Now, while I would certainly not call this angulate if I was writing the key, what is angulate? Because we don't, if we haven't seen both sides of this couplet, it's hard to move on. Again, we can come back to uh, something like bug guide. And in fact, on bug guide, there's a picture here. Oh, we can see that underneath there's this real projection between the eye uh, and the antenna. Or we can look at the top and see the same thing again. Yeah, there's this real ledge. Well, that's not what we have. Great. So we can go to couplet two with our beetle. Couplets two and three ask us about the front tibia, whether or not they're expanded. Um, and, and this isn't really anything special. So we can keep moving on down to four. Um, and here we have, uh, now we start seeing, oh, we're getting some more kind of division here. Uh, pronotum with more than two pairs of lateral CD or pronotum with one or two pairs of lateral CD only. Um, okay, so I could come here real quick and say, oh, maybe one, two, great. Okay, certainly no more than two, right? Um, so we can go now to six. Um, six, pronotum with two pairs of lateral CD, uh, one towards middle, one at the posterior lateral angles. Um, eyes with fine short CD versus, there's only a single pair of lateral CD and eyes glabrous. Now, if I was gonna quickly look, one, two, but wait a second, this eye here, there's no CD coming off of it. This is glabrous. This would kind of at first seem to not fit this couplet. Well, that means um, we have to go take a closer look. And this actually uh, made me stumble for a bit because I thought this was a pretty clear CETA. Actually, when I took this picture, this is the CETA that curls around here and just kind of actually pokes in right there. The CETA does not actually originate from there. And if we look at the other side, we see that's pretty clear. Here's this CETA at the middle. There's really no similarly large puncture at the base. So this is a type of situation where we have to look really carefully. And uh, now this doesn't, and here we might notice that, oh, we misinterpreted the number of CETA. There's actually only one. So we could um, come back to our key and move back. But again, remember that it was more than two or one or two. So this still counts as one or two. We're still at couplet six where we should be here, but the pronotum has a single pair of lateral CD and the eyes are glabrous. So we're gonna to go to seven. So here it's asking about um, the elytron with stride two, five at least, or two, five and seven with citidrous punctures and short CD um, or is uh, do two, five, and seven do not have satidrous punctures. And so this is kind of difficult to see with the pin um, here, but we'll start one, here's two, three, four, five, and seven. Um, and, and we can kind of see five and seven have, have some satidrous punctures actually down here, it, it sure looks like. But if we come to two, there's, there's not any in here. There's no satidrous punctures here, just, just down here. So, so two, five, and seven um, do not have satidrous punctures. And this can also be difficult because sometimes punctures are called umbilicate versus uh, satidrous. And uh, so these are characters that we need um, to be careful with. But we can go to couplet 14 now and move along. So now we're at couplet 14 labial palpamere to pluricetose or uh, bicetose or tricetose. And if you recall, we actually already looked at our labial palpamere too, and it was uh, pluricetose, which you can't quite make out in this picture. When we move to couplet 15, 
labium and mentum with submentum fused completely or labial mentum separated from submentum partially. So here we have the mentum and the submentum and um, the submentum has these two CD, these punctures with CD sticking out and it's actually completely fused. And it's easier to see um, at a direct angle, like looking flat at this, that we're looking down at this at slightly angled. Um, but these are fused together. We can move to 16. Um, dorsal surface, densely setos. Well, no, I wouldn't call this densely setos. We'd actually call this glabrous. So we can move to 18. In 18, uh, we have our labium with glossal sclerite markedly expanded preapically. So maybe um, yeah, and then sinuate, right? So sinuate means S-shaped, so that means it's going to kind of expand um, and then be S-shaped. And this is in Eastern North America. Now our specimen is from Eastern North America, or is, it, or is our glossal sclerite not expanded or parallel sided or expanded only apically? And here again, we can't quite see this super well in our picture, but these two CD are right at the end of this glossal sclerite, which is expanded right at the end. This is kind of straight and expanded to the tip. Um, and so we know that this is the genus Anisodactylus. Now, interestingly, we can go again to another key, to 36. Um, and so we can scroll down and find a key to the subgenera of Anisodactylus. Um, and so here, front tibia with apical spur trifid, so three pronged um, or front tibia with spur lanceolate or enlarged. So let's take a look here. Um, lanceolate, right, would kind of mean one, there's kind of one thing um, or just kind of angulate. This is not the best picture, but you can more or less make out that there's one prong here, a second and a third. This is actually trifid. Um, and again, this would be easier if we had the specimen, we could manipulate it at multiple angles. So we're going to couple it to. Um, so is there a short CD on the pronotum laterally and at the base? Um, and are there two or three, are there, does the clypeus laterally have two or three pairs of CD? Now, this pronotum is glabrous. There's no CD around the base or um, the lateral margins. And if we zoom in here, you can see that there's only one pair of CD here at the base of the clypeus. Um, so we know that this is in the subgenus Gynandrotarsus. And so now we've gone as far as we can using this resource and we've gotten this to subgenus. So now we have to move to other resources other than the American Beatles key. And in this case, we wanted to go to a revision by Noonan of 1973. Uh, where the genus Anisodactylus, actually the whole tribe or group of genera there are revised. And here actually this key is on Biodiversity Heritage Library, which is great. So this literature is open access to us. And so we can have a copy of this PDF. Um, and here's the key. Now, one thing I would note about using the original publication, a lot of times there's extra information here, right? So we can see key to the species of the subgenus Gynandrotarsus. And there's notes about the key, including talking about some of the characters. This is an incredible resource and is really good to use. But one downside of this, because um, a lot of times these were publications meant for um, in print, that all of the pictures that it's and figures that are being referenced in this key are uh, nowhere nearby in this text. Um, so that's going to be difficult with a PDF. It's easier, um, perhaps, if you have the in print book, but very few of us do. Now, one resource that we do have um, is this large document, which was shared with the Neon um, Karabid community, which has um, basically a compiled version of all of the keys that have been available uh, through 2010 or so for Karabids of the United States. And here, um, this key has been reproduced from Noonan 1973 um, and included the figures within the couplets. So that's what we'll use here. So we've keyed this to Anisodactylus gynandrotarsus. So again, we're going to read both uh, parts of this couplet. 
and look at the frontal fovea of head with clipoocular prolongation toward eye or clypeus lacking raised transverse ridge behind apex. Or there's an and statement, the frontal fovea lacking this prolongation um, and the clypeus with this transverse ridge. So um, as we get into species level keys, we see more and more unique characters and this is just something we have to deal with. And so um, when you come to a key like this, you've probably never heard of these characters. You've probably not seen them before. So you really have to take your time to figure out what they're saying um, specifically. So it helps with the illustration uh, that we have here. So the frontal fovea, right, the, would be on the kind of fronds or up here above, on top in front of the eyes. Um, is there a prolongation towards the eyes? So, okay, so we have this frontal transverse fovea here. Is there this little extension that goes towards the eyes on either side? That's the first character we're looking at. And the second is if we're looking at the um, apex of the clypeus, right? So our, um, uh, so we can look at our clypeus here, which connects up to the labrum in front of it, right? And so the apex, think the distal as opposed to proximal, right? The point that's furthest out, right up here towards the front end. Is there a transverse, right? Side to side ridge behind the apex. Okay, so here's our critter. Let's um, zoom in on our face. So here's our, um, fovea, right, this kind of depressed area on the head, and we have these um, two little uh, inserts here. Um, and is there just kind of this prolongation? Maybe. That's kind of hard to say. Um, I might say on this, at least from this view, that there is not. Um, but you do kind of see maybe it's a little bit impressed. But let's go check out this other character. So if we look up here at the clypeus, um, especially under the microscope, this is very clear. There is no ridge here along the apex. And again, this is something that we can pair uh, with pictures online. So, so here, um, you know, maybe we're saying that this may or may not have this prolongation towards the eye, but it definitely doesn't have this ridge. And so if we read our couplet again, um, to go to five, you'd have to go to five only if you had this ridge, right? And we think that it's lacking, so we should probably go to two. But real quick, we can jump down to five and just try to find a species that's down here. Say, oh, here's Rusticus. That belongs this way in the key. And it doesn't, Rusticus doesn't also key out up here. So if we go to Bug Guide, hey, we can find Rusticus. There's actually a picture of the head. Um, and we can kind of zoom in and we can see, oh, there's actually this kind of transverse ridge here right behind the apex. Yeah, we definitely don't have that. Great, we interpreted at least that character correctly. And yeah, we see that there's no elongation here, um, which is what the key said there should not be an elongation. So, so good, at least now we've kind of seen um, this character state. We might still not be sure about what's going on right here. We definitely don't see it here. We may or may not see it. In any case, we're pretty comfortable going to couple of two. In couplet two, um, there were some dull black, shiny, prominent microsculpture, okay? Clypeus with raised transverse ridge, okay? Microsculpture less developed, Clypeus with or without transverse ridge. In this case, we lucked out. We don't actually really need to worry about this microsculpture character, which can be difficult to see, especially in a picture um, like this. Now, I would say this is shiny. You can see the, the, the um, just shine from the photographs here, um, but uh, also we don't have the ridge, so we're definitely going to go to three. So here we have, again, Clypeus with a raised ridge for Texanus or without. Um, also, we can start to see that, oh, the pronotal shape is important for species. So um, here is, is the pronotal, the posterior angle here, not broadly rounded, um, or maybe it's various, right? We kind of have broadly rounded or maybe something like this. Well, in either case, um, we know that we don't have this transverse ridge. So this is great. This, this character, we're lucky in our specimen that it, this is bringing us straight down to couplet four. So we now know that it's one of these two species. So, okay, does our dorsum have a prominent greenish tinge, especially towards the sides? 
Um, and also does the sternum six of the male have two pairs of CD? Um, then there's also some genitalic characters here. We can see um, these genitalic drawings um, looking at the median lobe, perhaps with uh, um, this apical disc, right? So, or is it not a greenish tinge? Okay, so this is great. We don't have a greenish tinge. So we're already thinking it's probably here dulcicollis. Um, hey, let's also look, this happens to be a male. We can see uh, this male here sticking out. Uh, the adiagus. So we can go to six. Remember that in carabids, um, it's not super easy to see in this picture, but um, we have like the second um, uh, abdominal vent, uh, sternite up here. Um, so kind of two, three, four, five, um, six. No? <laughs> two, three, four, five. This is six. This is seven. So here is six right here. Um, and we see that there's only one pair of CD. That's great. Um, so the male only has one pair, male only has one pair of ambulatory CD. Um, and we see it should have a, uh, a prominent apical disc, kind of this thing here. And actually we can see that in this image. So this is dulcicollis. And here's where we could again go um, uh, online and we could look for, hey, where's there a picture of dulcicollis? But we have to be careful because pictures online are often misidentified. Bug Guide is a very reliable source, but it happens. These are difficult things. Um, but here's another nice picture of the head. And yeah, we see, ooh, there's a little, maybe a little bit of a, of a groove there. But yeah, it's missing this ridge. Um, okay, and oh yeah, this pronotum, that looks kind of a lot like ours. So, so maybe we're on the right page and certainly it matches all of the characters here. And so in fact, we would identify this as Anisodactylus dulcicollis, which is what the um, expert has identified this specimen as for our NEON project.